Good evening, everybody. Bruchim Aboyim. Welcome back once again to this special opportunity to share thoughts, understanding about each and every month. This Chodesh, we've just begun the month of Sivan, which obviously serves such a unique and special place as the month of Kabbalah Satayra. So Be'ezah Hashem Yisbarach, we should be zoicha to be able to tap in a little bit to feel the unique power of the month and what the Indian of Kabbalah Satayra really is meant to be to all of us, Be'ezah Hashem. Each month has a special name. Each month corresponds, as we said, to one of the Shvatim. And each month corresponds to a different one of the Mazalois, to a different one of the signs of the zodiac, we call them in English, a sign of the mazal is a combination of stars up in Shamayim that have a certain figure, shape to them. And what that shape means is also a descriptive element about the power of the month itself. So perhaps to share a few thoughts Hashem, about this beautiful special month, the month of Kabbalah Satoira, the month of Sivan. Firstly, Mamish just for a moment or two, but the name Sivan itself, the Svarim tell us, the Zion and the Samach, or Isis, Meschalfais, and the word Sivan is related to the word Ziv, something that shines out, a bright light. And the Ur, the light of Hashem's Torah, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu came and gave the Torah to Klal Yisrael. And as we mentioned, I believe previously, one of the other Shiurim, Hashem says, I wrote Kivyachal, my nefesh, my soul, my Ratzin, and I gave it to you. And by bringing the Torah down to the world, by Klal Yisrael learning and studying the Torah, we're filling the world with the light of Hashem. So this month where the Torah was given to the world is a month of light, a month of a bright, beautiful, shining source that brings solace, comfort, Nechama, Kedusha, and all good midas to the world. And that's this month, the month of Siva. So perhaps to focus this time on two of the inyanim of the month of Sivan, the inyan of the mazal and the inyan of the name of the shevet, the shevet that it's makbil to. As we mentioned, every month has its own unique and special mazal. And the mazal of the month of Sivan is teomim, twins. Something about this month that relates to the concept, if we could use the expression sort of like carbon copies. A twin, we're not just talking about two babies that are born at the same time, we're talking about sort of identical twins, twins that are copies of each other. And we know the Pasik speaks about Klal Yisrael, the whole Shira, Shira really speaks about Klal Yisrael and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as a couple, a husband and wife, which is the highest level of relationship, is the level of kesher, of klal Yisrael to Hashem, as an eved to a melech, a servant to a king. There's a higher level than that, which is a son to a father, a child to a parent. Those are the two ideas that are most commonly used, most commonly expressed. Avinu Malkeinu, our father, who is our king. Obviously, the, the, the king is more the descriptive element. The father is the more powerful one. It's Avinu, Shehu Malkeinu. But it's Avinu Malkeinu. But the highest level, Rashi in the beginning of Shira Shirim says, Kol Ashirim Koidesh. The Shira Shirim is Koidesh Kadoshim. Shira Shirim is the third level, the highest level, which is the level of Ishva Ishta. It's two halves that complete each other. Kav Yochel HaKadosh Baruch Hu is complete together with Klal Yisrael. The Gemara Darshans, the Pasik. The day Kavyachal of the Chasana and the day of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's joy in his heart. So there's a beautiful idea related here. Chazal tell us that when we got the Torah, as we mentioned earlier, it's Anon Nafshi Ksovis Yehovis. Hashem took his whole will, Kavyachal, that's expressed in the Bria, the will that he wanted to share with us, I'll upon him. Hashem gave us an expression of His will. When we learn His Torah and we fulfill His mitzvahs, we're really learning to emulate HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Svarim HaKadosh tell us 
that the word Asher Kitshanu be mitzvahis of their his mitzvahis. Kipshute, that means they're his tzava. He commanded us to do it. But the Svarim tells us it also means Asher Kiddushanu be mitzvahis of, it's his mitzvahis, because these are the things that he does. How do I get close to Hashem Yisbarach? By emulating him. How do I realize what he does and know how to emulate him? That's his Torah and his mitzvahis. It's also you do with the Svarim Akhtar, you should bring down that the word mitzvah, besides commandment, also relates to the word savta. Two people that are escorting each other, like a, a tzevet on an airplane, is people that work together as a team to take care of all the passengers. So mitzvah also means through the mitzvah we become tzevet with Hashem, Yisbarach Kav Yochel. We're working together with Him, doing, accomplishing what He wants. And through that, we become closer to Him, through emulating Him. Chazal tell us the mitzvah, V'halachta bidrochov, Mahu rachum af'ato rachum, Mahu chanun af'ato chanun. And really, this is the shoyrish, the aside of Torah and mitzvahs. That through emulating Hashem, we also become, we gain and acquire the midah's toivahs that HaKadosh Baruch Hu expresses in His world. We're bringing out the air of our neshama. And through that, we connect to Hashem Yisbarach. It's fascinating. Rashi brings down, in Bereshis, it says, Vayere vayivoyker yoim hashishi. And Rashi says, the second pshat, Yoim Hashishi refers to what? The, to Heya Yediyah. Yoim Hashishi, the sixth day, refers to the sixth day of Sivan, the Yoim Shalmat and Torah. And tonight is HaKadosh Baruch Hu with Maise Bereshus, in Mikablu Yisrael Satorah Mutav, in Lav, Exor Sa'ilun L'Soyu Vavayu, that the whole Bria was tolling on Yoim Hashishi. But why Dafka is it expressed Yoim Hashishi, the sixth day? What's special about the number six? The number six is written by a letter Vav. Vav is the gematria of six. A Vav has a meaning. A Vav is a hook. A hook is what connects two things together. Vaveyo Amudim. It was Amudim poles in the base of Migdosh in the Mishkon. In the Chatzar Mishkon, we had to hang the Vilainais, the curtains on. And there was a vav that you used to connect the curtain onto the pole. A vav is used, a hook is to connect two things together, to hold, hold them together. And Yoim Hashishi, vav sivan, vav sivan, the sixth day is a hook. It connects us together with Hashem Isbarch. Through having the Torah, we get to emulate Hashem. The letter Aleph, Kiyadua represents Aleph, unity, oneness, represents Hashem Yisbarach. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elekeinu, Hashem Echad, Hashem is one, and one is represented by the letter Aleph. The gematria of the letter Aleph, we all know, is one. But the Helig Svarim tell us that the letter Aleph also has another gematria besides one, and that's 26. The gematria of the Shem Avaya. How is the letter Aleph the gematria of the Shem Avaya? How is it 26? So the way the Aleph is written is as if there's two Yudin, two letter Yud, one on top, the top arm that curves down towards the middle base of the letter. And then on the bottom, there's another like an upside down turned around Yud, which is on the bottom. The middle line of the letter Aleph is like a Vav. It's a stick. It's like the letter Vav. A line, Bechlal, is used always to connect two dots together in geometry. And the letter Vav represents the idea of connecting two things together. That's the, the way it's written, the, a line. So an Aleph, the Svarim tell us, is really in its essence three letters together. A Yud, a Yud, and a Vav. And that's why the letter Aleph also represents the Gematri of the Shem Havaya, 26. But there's something very beautiful and meaningful buried in this Remes, that the way the Aleph is expressed is two Yuds with a Vav. A yud represents the shlemus of the midas that are expressed in the world of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, as revealed to us. The three spheres of of wisdom, chachma, bina, and das. The three spheres of knowledge, understanding, and internalizing the knowledge and understanding together, chachma, bina, and das. And the seven spheres of action, chesed, gevura, teferes, netzach, yisoid, and malchus, which. I don't remember, but it could be in one of the other shiurim we mentioned that in, in the four letters of the Shem Avaya, the Yud, the original Yud, is, ma, is uh, Mare, the idea of Chachma, the He is Bina, and then 
the das is really the chibur of the two of them together. The kutzer shal yud is keser more, but the vav and the hey, the vav represents the sheish midos of Hakadosh Baruch Hu's being mashpia, which is chesed kibur tveres neitzachoyd yisoid, and the last letter hey is the malchus. The malchus is when somebody is able to give his milus to someone else. The letter hey is the mekabelas. Akapanim, the last letter hey represents the 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 seventh one of the midas of action, the, the mid of malchus. Which actually this week now, the week of Rosh Chodesh Sivan, the week of preparing for Kabbalah Satoira, is the last week of the seven weeks of Sirius Oimer. Is also makbil to midas malchus. It's to take all the midas of Chesed Kibbutz Veres Neitzachoyd Yisoid and live them with their entirety and their completion. But Akapanim, the letter Yud represents the ten spheres. The Svarim also tell us that the name Yaakov Avinu is Ekev, the heel, which is the lowest part of the body, and the letter Yud. Yaakov, Yud Ekev. And it represents someone struggling, working up from the bottom all the way to reach the highest levels. To reach the Yud, which is to encompass all the Milois, Kavyachal of our Neshama, of our godly Neshama, that's expressed, in the, it's reflected in the letter Yud, the, the Chabad, and the Chesed Gebur, and so on, to live that way, working up from the Ekev. Ekev represents, Yaakov represents the name of, of struggle, of working to grow, working to go higher, working to conquer, to acquire all these beautiful Midas that we bet some are part of our personality to bring them out and activate them. And the, the name Yisrael, Yaakov Avinu God, is when he accomplishes that. You ended up getting there. You got there. You, 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 you conquered the mountain. You got the goal that you were looking for. So the letter Yud represents the ten spheres. How do we write an Aleph? There's a Yud on top that represents HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And then there's another Yud like sort of flipped over upside down as if almost like it's a mirror image of the Yud on top that represents us. That represents our Avodah. To down in this world to be reflecting the light of Hashem's Midas and the way we live our lives. And what's in the middle? The Vav. That's the hook that connects us. Through learning Torah, through understanding the mitzvahs, it's not just kavyachal, some random thing that HaKadosh Baruch says, do this and one day we'll go to Gan Eden. What we're doing is really activating our inner potential, bringing out the light of our own neshamas, learning how to live our fullest life. How do I live a godly life in this physical world that we live in? How do I use all my physical practical, materialistic needs and everything I'm involved in to use it as a way to express, to bring out the light of my neshama within this world, which is the ultimate purpose. That's through the Helech Torah And through that, I connect myself to Hashem Yisbarach by learning to emulate again, by learning to express all the goodness of my neshama. I connect to Him. The Zohar HaKadosh brings down that every day of the week, the 613 mitzvahs, we know, and each day of the week, Yom Rishon through Yom Shishi represent a different set of 100 mitzvahs. Yom Rishon represents 100 mitzvahs, Yom Sheni 100 mitzvahs, Friday 100 mitzvahs, Yom Shishi, and there's 13 left. 13 is the gematria of Echad. There are 13 mitzvahs that are makbil to Shabbos Kodesh. And those 13 mitzvahs, Limanat Torah, Tefillah, Kriyashma, Tzitzis, Mila, so on and so forth. Those 13 mitzvahs are mitzvahs of, of Chibur. The Rambam and Hilchas uh, Yad Chazaka, many of those mitzvahs are mitzvahs that are listed in Sefer Ava. The Sefer of Connection, Ava, is also Begimah Shriya 13. So it's the mitzvahs that keep us bound to Hashem Yisbarach. Shabbos and Yontif Grado also. But the Zohar HaKodesh says that Shabbos Makbil. I believe that each one of the days of the week that's Makbil to a different hundred mitzvahs those mitzvahs correspond to a different midah. Yom Rishon, the first day of the week, is makbil to the midah of chesed. Yom Sheini is gevura. Yom Shlishi is teferes. And there's a hundred mitzvahs that emanate from that midah, that allow us to express that midah. A hundred mitzvahs that encompass the midah of that day. A hundred mitz- mitzvahs that express chesed. A hundred mitzvahs that express gevura. A hundred mitzvahs that express teferes and so on and so forth. And Shabbos is the day of Ichod. Shabbos is also the day of Malchus, Yadua, Shabbos Malchusah. is a day of bringing this all down into action to connect it 
to, to, to our lives, to be able to feel the Malchus of Hashem in this world. So this is the idea that when we say Chodesh Sivan, the Ziv, the light that comes down to the world, is reflected in the mazel of Teumim, of twins. Because what's supposed to happen is that we, Kavyachal, are supposed to become a twin with Hashem Yisbarach. We are supposed to express all the good of Hashem, what Hashem Yisbarach Kavyachal is doing in His world. And it's obvious, it's each one of us in our own unique way that we're seeing the light of Hashem, Kefi, we mentioned other times, the 600,000 days, 600,000 different oifanim of how to understand the Torah and the mitzvahs. Each one has our own unique insight and appreciation of it because of who we are. We're all different from each other. And we're going to emulate within the same package of Tariag mitzvahs, within the same package of Hashem's vision, Kav Yochel, that's expressed in His Torah. We're going to take it and we're going to absorb it and we're going to live it in our own way. But each one of us in our way becomes like Te'umim, a twin Kav Yochel with Hashem Yisbarach. It's interesting, but I know I've noticed... Over the years, sometimes couples that are married that have Baruch Hashem, a flourishing, thriving, happy relationship, that sometimes you find a certain comment or a certain um, characteristic. I don't know, like the husband and wife. Sometimes, well, one, by one of my kids, my mitzvahs, my wife told me that a certain lady made a comment about something. She didn't tell me who it was. She said, but this, this and this happened, and this lady made a comment. And I said, oh, it's the same kind of comment that this rabbi would make, a friend of mine. And my wife looked at me and she said, well, the lady who said it was his wife. And that's not accidental. Many, many such things are like that. That, so to say, we, we, we sort of become blended into one almost that we so often we reflect certain characteristics from living together and sharing. We grow, so to say, into each other. Through learning Torah, we grow into being partners with Hashem. We absorb His wisdom. We absorb His knowledge. We absorb Kav Yachal, His mindset. We absorb His will. And that helps us become people that live life, that express His will, Kav Yochel, in our way, bringing Hashem's light into the world. So that's the mazel of this wonderful month, the mazel of Tu'umim. When we realize this, what's, supposed to, what's Torah supposed to do to me? It's not just like all these like rules and regulations. It's, it's bringing out the full depth of my personality. It's helping me to live a thriving, passionate, beautiful life that expresses all the light of my neshama. And through that, I'm living a life of constant, meaningful connection to Hashem Yisbarach, the King of the world. So perhaps now to share an, one more nekudah also, and that is the name of the month. The Shevet, I'm sorry. That is the Shevet of the month. The Shevet is Shevet Zavulan. We mentioned previously that, according to Manis Farm, the way the, the Shvatim correspond to the months is Kafi the Seder at the Golem that they were in the Midbar, the Bnei Soscha works with that. So the first three months, Nisan, Iyar, and Sivan, correspond to the first three Shvatim, the ones that were in Degel Machne Yehuda, the ones that camped out in the east, in the front, the leaders, they were all Bnei Leia. So it's Yehuda, Yesachar, and Zvulan. Nisan is Yehuda. The Malchus, the Nisan, is a Chodesh Hazalachem Reish Chodashim, the complete expression of Hashem's Malchus in the world. The days of Achon of Kabbalah Satoyer is Shevet Yisachar. And finally, the month of Kabbalah Satoyer itself, the month of Sivan, corresponds to Shevet Zavulan. Shevet Zavulan, it's interesting, because Shevet Zavulan was the Shevet of being Isaac in, in Yone Parnasa. And supporting Yisachar in his learning Torah. It wasn't the Shevet of sitting and learning Dafka. It was the Shevet that went out and worked and supported Yisachar. He should be able to learn. So first perhaps to begin with this um, idea. The name Zvulon is based on the word Zvul. Zvul is a dwelling place. A place to live. And when Zvulon was born, because Leah now realized that she was able to have half the Shvatim Baruch HaKodesh, she knew there was Sach HaKol going to be 12, and now she was already giving birth to her sixth son, but she's half the Shvatim, half the Shvatim. So Leah said, Apa'am yizbeleni isha ki yoladati lo yishisha banim. Now, my husband will make that my my home, my tent will be his main dwelling place. Apa'am yizbeleni isha, he's going to be koveya, his place by me. 
Because I brought into the world six of the sons that have to carry on his legacy, six of the Shiftei Ka, six, one half of the Chalak, of the Chalak of Klal Yisrael, which is going to bring the light of Hashem to the world. So now he's going to be Kveya's Iku dwelling place by me. So the word Zvul, Beis Zvuloi, is a reference to the Beis Amigdosh. A, a, a Zvul is a dwelling place. The Tachlis of Torah and Mitzvahs is to create a dwelling place for HaKadosh Baruch Hu here in this world. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created a universe and He created a world with all the vast, fascinating life experiences and life opportunities and life situations. And they're all opportunities to create a dwelling place for Him by living it and fulfilling it according to His will. Obviously, we need the Tamid HaChomim because first of all, First and foremost, the or the light of Hashem's good in the world is there because when a person is masig the will of Hashem, that itself, like the Svarim from top to bottom, Medrashim, Gemaris, Rishonim, Kadmonim, all the way down to everybody. The light of the Torah is the Iker light that brings Hashem's presence into the world. And that's the Iker thing that brings Shechina. And every year in Klal Yisrael is Yoinik, is able to have the strength to do what he needs to do in his Avodah Hashem. Based on the Talmud Chachamim. And that's true about the Talmud Chachamim that are sitting and learning and they're not teaching and they're not Rabbanim and they're not Rabbeim and they're not Kiruv professionals. The fact that a Talmud Chacham is sitting and learning and being moirid, Yediyas Hashem to the world, that's Mekadesh the world and that fills the world with Kiddush and every Yid, like the heart that pumps blood to every one of the billions of cells in the human body, the Talmud Chachamim are the ones that are giving Ruchni Yistika energy to every other Yid in Klal Yisrael. It's the Iker, the Iker, the Lev of Klal Yisrael. The Gemara Sanhedrin, that someone who says, My Hanili Rabbanan, what do we need a Talmud Chacham if he's just sitting, he's sitting and learning, he's not even teaching anybody, he's not a Rav, he's not a Paisik, he's not a Rosh Hashiva. So, ouch, right? That's Apikoiris, Rechamon and Litzlan. To recognize the whole world revolves around the Talmud Chacham. All the Shefa, all the Arab, every other Yid comes from the fact that there's a Talmud Chacham that's sitting and learning and bringing the Shefa of Hashem's Ur to the world through his knowledge of Hashem's will. But Zvulan is the one that goes out and does it in action. The way we make the world into a base Zvul, a dwelling place for Hashem, and like the partnership, so to say, by, between Yisachar and Zvulan, Lamais Yisachar is a Yoyde Bino Le'itim. They were the ones that taught Klal Yisrael how Hashem and Shevet Levi, in their way also, was the Shevet, the Shiftei Ka, that taught Klal Yisrael, like the Rambam writes, and then the Shemit of Yoyvel, Levi was there to dedicate themselves to learning Hashem's will and teaching it to others. But the others are the ones that need to go and actually do it. And Zvulan, through his being Isaac and in Yone Parnosa, being involved in the physical world, was the one that made the world the base Zvul. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to be present in the physical world with us. And that was Shevet Zvulan. That were living and involved in the physical business world. And for so many Heilig Eden today, the Kiddush Hashem that they make by being honest, by being Kaddosh, by being Menshluch, when they're out and exposed within the physical world, that's making the world, the physical world, a base of all for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But I want to, I think, be myself one more Nekuda, which I feel is so also critical, important, and meaningful for us. Besides making the world a base of all, a home for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I forgot to mention, within the first Nakuda of making the world a base of all, we find also so fascinatingly that the base of Migdash, in the Mishkan, there was a Shulchan with bread, there was a Menorah with light, there was a Mizbeach Hazov that had the Ketores, Kilo, it's physical things, the, the base of Migdash. What makes that a place of Ashra Sashchina? And we see that these were the same three things that were present in the home of the Ava Yisakadoshim, Rashi says that when Yitzchok married Rivka, the Nisim came back, that it was Ner Dolok, Merev Shabbos, Lev Shabbos, there was a Bracham and Suyi, Be'isa, and Onan Kosher, Ala Oil. Those three in Yonim are the same three in Yonim that were Nims on the base of Migdash. The Ner Dolok was the Menoira. The Bracham and Suyi, Be'isa, was the Lecham Aponim, and the Onan Kosher, Ala Ktoiris. The Onan Kosher, Ala Oil was the Ktoiris, the Onan Vechisa, Anan Ktoiris. So it's being involved, a Yiddish home where we live, life, that, that's a base amigdash. That's where the Shechino is found and filling it within the physical world. But I want to be nice of one more Nakuda, which I think is so vichdig also and kosher to the first part we were talking about being to, to umim with Hashem Yisbarach. 
And that is that besides creating the world as a baseball, each and every one of us is supposed to be a baseball. Each person, when we talk about creating a makoim for Ashra's hashchina, one of the pshatim is within the physical world that we live, and the other pshat is within ourselves. Every single person, really the neshama that's mechayos, that gives us our life, is a neshama that's a chelik alekaimimal, a spark of Hashem's endless light. And what we need to do to live a full and happy life is to be a makom of shechina. When a person, Rahman al is not in touch with the beauty of his neshama, when he's not living, when his decisions and the, what, the things he's doing are not an expression of the beauty of the neshama, when he's disconnected, so then it, everything he does is mortal. Everything has no eternal impact. Everything has no, really, it's not affecting the fabric of the universe. And a person feels that void. Whatever I'm doing is here today, gone tomorrow. It's really meaningless. When a person is living a life of Torah and mitzvahs and midas toivas and yir shemaim and avodas Hashem, everything that I do, everything, traveling on the train to work, going to the grocery store to pick up diapers and formula for my baby, everything I do becomes an expression of shechina in the world. Everything that I'm doing, I become a base of all. I become a resting place for Hakadosh Baruch Hu shechina to be in me, because I'm living a life that's expressing the beauty of my neshama in every single thing I do. Kodesh Baruch should be mezaka us, this special Heilige month. Should be zaycha each and every one of us for our own personal shefa of Kabbalah Satayra. For us to be able to feel, to understand, to appreciate the beauty of Hashem's will and how it would apply to me personally. Hashem should give us the koyach to live it. B'simcho b'toiv lev with vitality, with energy, with joy. We should all be zaycha to be able to live a life where we know everything we're doing has eternal ramifications, has the power to really change and uplift the whole world around us. And together we should be zaycha to see the ultimate expression, the Or Chodesh al and Toyer. And if it's a Mashiach is going to come, we're going to have the Gilui of the Nun Share Bina, which Pashtas is already in the middle of taking place. There's so much a gilui of Pneumius HaToyra. So if you understand all the Saitis HaToyra, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shemim Zaka, is the Pekor of Yamenu. We should all go happily, healthily together to greet Mashiach, the Beis HaMikdosh, Ben Heira, B'Yamenu, Amen, B'Yamen. Alech Tega, and beautiful month, and a wonderful happy Shavuos. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe. If you would like to help us spread the word, give this video a thumbs up and a five-star review. Also, don't forget to ask your friends to subscribe as well. If you would like to partner with us and sponsor an episode, send an email to info at jfoundations.com. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day. We will see you in the next video.